Welcome back. So you're familiar with data frames, but Polars has another object called a lazy frame. What is a lazy frame and when should you use one? Lazy frames are essentially query plans for data frames. Rather than executing operations on the fly, lazy frames compile the requirements you specify and then execute them when directed. In many ways, this is contrary to how Python typically works. That is, Python is an interpreter-based language and code is executed line by line instead of first being compiled. Interpreter languages often lead to better debugging and testing, but are slower with execution. On the other hand, compiled languages perform much better, but make it harder to debug and test. So how does all of this tie into Polars? Well, Polars was originally built in Rust, which is a compiled language. The Python version of Polars is essentially a wrapper that uses Rust at its core. And this is really the secret to why Polars is so much faster than Pandas. This compile first mentality is the inspiration for lazy frames, and it all starts with scan methods. In this video, we're going to create a lazy frame query plan using the scan CSV input function. We'll use our credit card transactions dataset to do this. As a disclaimer, this is a computer generated dataset and it does not represent real transactions or credit card numbers. Okay, so with that said, let's come into our first cell here. I'm going to import Polars as PL. And now we can read in and create a lazy frame. So I'm going to type lazy frame, just so we know what we're working with here. And I'll type pl.read, excuse me, I'm gonna say scan CSV. And then I'm going to pass in the path to the CSV file. So I can grab this here and just drop this in right there. Okay, now this does have dates in here, so we do kind of want to read those incorrectly. So I'm going to say try parse dates, and set that equal to true. And let's just below that type lazy frame so we can see what we get back. Okay, when we run the code, we get a lazy query plan. Now there isn't too much here because all we're doing is reading in a CSV file and that's all we've specified so far. There is a note here telling us that this is just the naive plan and we get a suggestion that we should run the optimized plan to view what that actually looks like. Now, since our examples will be very basic, getting the optimized plan won't really appear any different from the naive plan, so we won't worry about that right now. But it brings us to one of the main advantages of using a lazy frame to build data pipelines. That is, that when you're building a data pipeline with multiple operations, and you do so in a lazy frame, you allow pullers to compile and optimize your operations. Meaning that certain operations, like filtering rows and columns, will be done as soon as possible, so that other operations, like aggregation, can run faster. With that said, let's add some operations to our lazy frame query plan. We'll aggregate the transaction amounts by the merchant categories. So I'm actually going to just copy and paste from our notes here and then explain what's going on. So we are applying similar operations like we do on normal data frames to our lazy frame, but it's not actually going to execute those operations. It's going to save them in the query plan. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get back. Okay, we get a new query plan that includes the aggregation operation. So at this point, we have only been creating a query plan, but the end goal is to display and return a data frame. After building your query plan, you can execute it with the collect method. Collect will tell pullers to execute an optimized version of the query plan and return the results in a data frame. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy from above, paste into our cell down here. Then I'm gonna call the collect method and we can go ahead and run this. So in the output, we have our final aggregated data frame, and you should begin to see now the value of lazy frames and delaying execution. And that is all we have for this video. I hope you found the concept of lazy frames intriguing, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the chat. With all that said, we'll catch up with you in the next video.